Did you see that? The trains have been slowing down every single time they pass through the rail yard. Jamila has noticed and can't help but think that this place was improperly planned out. She thinks that the train shouldn't be going through the rail yard, but that the yard should be tying into the main line instead. She mentions her concerns to the Clearwater Southern Brass, but they are ignored due to the expense of remedying them. The rail yard is brand new. Clearwater Southern can't possibly justify the expense of relocating it. But one day, a train carrying fuel between Nicolet Bay and Duluth derails in the middle of the rail yard. Thankfully, the worst thing to happen is a major delay in deliveries as the area is cleaned up, but everyone seems to understand that Clearwater Southern has gotten very lucky this time. The company's leaders reach out to Jamila and apologize for their malfeasance and ask if she has any ideas on how to move forward from here. She points out that Clearwater Southern already owns a remnant parcel on the other side of the lake that would be perfect for a new rail yard. The size is nearly identical to their existing site, and with a bit of thoughtful planning, they may be able to completely grade separate the track coming from the facility by sending it underneath the existing bridges. And she mentions that though this may be expensive, the timing couldn't be better. The county has just purchased land in the Copper Valley Industrial Park for a new waste treatment facility and will be decommissioning the old landfill soon. And Bend, sensing an opportunity, has proactively amended their comprehensive plan to change the nearby industrial parcels to offices. This has caused many factories to consider relocation, understanding that while their current uses are grandfathered, future expansion is unlikely since the request will now require a variance or a comprehensive plan amendment. The result of these actions is a surge in industrial property values, and if Clearwater Southern were to market their old rail yard for industrial uses, they could surely capitalize on this opportunity and maybe even make some money on the deal. The executives are incredibly impressed and give her the leeway to do whatever it takes to make the plan a reality. They see big things in her future, bigger things than just managing a rail yard. In this episode, we'll call a number of mulligans. We'll relocate the rail yard, decommission the landfill, and redevelop the original industrial park in Bend. We'll also create a new waste treatment campus in the industrial park and add industrial where the old rail yard used to be located. And if you like to call a mulligan from time to time, hit the like button. If you just like to start over when you realize that you made a big mistake, hit the like button for that too and let me know what you normally do in the comments. Or leave an emoji representing mulligans for the sake of engagement. Without any further ado, let's jump right in. Hello and welcome back to Magnolia County. And I thought that we begin right here at our old rail yard where you can see that this passenger train is slowing down as it passes the rail yard and it's switching to a different track. Now this is the main reason why we need to relocate this rail yard. It is a huge bottleneck in our main line and not the most logical way to lay this out. Now, interestingly, I've been thinking about this mulligan for a long time, but I planned the location of this before I planned basically anything out in this build. So it's a bit unfortunate that we have to call this one, but we do. And the main idea will be that rather than having this in the middle of the system, we'll have it off to the side and the system will, this will tie into the system rather than the other way around. So we're gonna place that way over here in this empty spot that we have right at the base of our finger hills. So we're gonna need to buy a couple of tiles. So I want to just place a brand new rail yard. And the reason I wanna do that is we're not gonna pause. We're gonna keep this thing moving as much as we can. Now, we're gonna come real close. We've got our contour lines on. I wanna send that center main line through underneath the bridge if I can. So you can see I'm angling this because I want this line to basically go straight through here. Now I'm gonna take a chance here. Hopefully this builds at the lowest ground, not the highest. It did, so we carved into the hills a little bit. That is perfectly okay, because I wanted to be able to run this directly underneath the bridge if possible. Look at that, oh, that is beautiful. We won't have to rebuild that bridge at all. So let's try to keep our grade as close to 0% as we can, which will mean that we are gonna carve into the hillside a little bit. That is outstanding. So we are doing that because I want to come through and cross at the narrowest point. And then from here, we need to make a nice connection here, which will be cut and fill. So I'm going to bump this down to once again, as close to 0% as I can get, which will give us a retaining wall. And then I'll angle this in and then get rid of that extra segment right there. That is looking really, really, really okay. <laughs> it's not, it's not perfect, but it's fine. Now, I'm going to use the complex curve tool to tie all of these side lines into our, it's not really a main line, but the main line coming out of our rail yard. And what we'll do is we'll go up maybe 15 or so units. We'll tap once. That is where our curve will begin. And then we'll go over to where we're going, tap one more time, and then we'll pull this up. And I think we'll try to join up somewhere near our bridge. So if things get ugly and hairy, we won't have to see it. It'll be just fine. Over here, I am concerned that we're gonna need to level some ground. We'll give it a shot. 
we'll go 15 up again and then over and then right up to where this other line is connecting. And once again, we got as lucky as we could get. It, it came out completely level. I feel like we're getting away with one right now and I'm going to take it. I think we're going to count that as a win. It's a little messy right here, but we can live with a bit of imperfection, or at least I can, and I hope that you can as well. <laughs> now, right here, I mentioned that I want to fill in just a bit of the lake. And the reason for that is you can see we've already got a bit of a retaining wall bridge, and then our lake is spilling over just a little bit on the other side. I don't like that. So we can fill this in just a bit, and then we will temporarily decommission this, the height of realism, and come through with just the normal track segment. And now I'm going to angle this in. It only needs to go towards our cargo terminal and our passenger train station. And we'll do something like that and have a wacky little teeny tiny retaining wall. I don't love that at all. Let's give that attempt number two. Well, I would think that the Department of Natural Resources would have a slight problem with all of the changes I just made to the water, but we are going to let one go because we have to. <laughs> that was absolute madness. Coming back over here, what we need to add is a bit of parking like we had at our old facility, as well as power and water. So we'll begin with a road which will carry our power and water, at least partially. And I want to make sure that we're coming up here at a nice 90. This is a highway after all. And I want to back away from our crossing, if at all possible. So we'll come in here at a 90, and then we will once again use our complex curve tool. Here's how far out we'll go. We'll go over here, click again, and then curve this right in. Oh my goodness, this tool is so, so, so good. All right, now we'll add some parking, and let's be completely blunt. We're not going to need a lot of parking. There's already this parking here. I want to double check and we'll take a look at our previous facility and see how many cars we had parking there. Looks like one scooter, two right here, and then another two right there. So we overdid it just a little bit. So maybe we'll go a little less hard over here. And let's just say we'll add in two medium parking lots, still overdoing it, but it feels right. It feels like a place like this should have more employees and should have more parking. And I'm much more satisfied with this. So now that we have all of this, we need water and power. And just thinking back to when I designed the map, I added water underneath the superior highway. So water and sewer is an easy connection. And power is going to be a bit trickier, but we have a transmission line right here. So I think that the way that I will handle this is to add a transformer. Now, I don't know if this is if this is OK. If you happen to work at a utility, let me know. <laughs> How would you do this? Would you just run a whole bunch of power lines to this area or would we do this? I'm gonna say that because of how much power this facility likely takes, this will be our approach, but it may not be the height of realism. And then I'm gonna come through with an alley to make this connection. And rather than just running this along the side like that, we'll snap to the edge of the building at a 90 and then we'll come out with a straight segment and then I'm going to come in at this road. We'll once again turn on snap to existing geometry and just angle in nicely like that. And one quick connection to our main line and we are good to go. This place should be 100% operational. Very, very good. But I want to make one more change. If they're investing in this new rail facility and if we have all of this, well, it's not all of this, but it's 2000 extra dollars per hour. I want to add a maintenance hall onto here. So this is very expensive, but it will make train maintenance faster, keep the trains moving. And in general, I think that if you're going to reinvest in this facility, you want to do it right. And I also just love how complete this makes the facility look. We will decommission our previous facility now, and I'll get rid of that monster parking lot. And then we have all of these siding tracks that we'll get rid of as well. And then we'll retie into our cargo rail terminal and our passenger train station. 
so we could end here but i do want to clean things up just a little bit you can see that this doesn't look wonderful really on either side so we will decommission this temporarily oh and look at that one more strange bump we'll completely redo these connections in And there we go, we should be good to go. So with our rail yard relocation complete, let's move on to building our waste treatment facility. So as a bit of a refresher, all garbage is now being handled by this landfill, which is in a terrible location. So this is right in the middle of Bend, kind of. It's in this little valley and there's no room to grow. And that's particularly problematic because we are currently processing less garbage than we are generating. So this thing will soon fill up. We've got no room to expand in either direction. All we can do is make our storage larger until it's completely full. So we are going to resolve that by adding an incinerator and a recycling center over here in the Copper Valley Industrial Park. So the first thing we need to do is unlock both of those. And the incinerator is two development points and the recycling center is also two. So I've been giving this some thought and I think that we're going to place our incineration plant right here and our landfill right here. And we'll have to extend this street a little ways to meet up with our landfill. So the reason why I want to do that is we'll have enough space here for the incinerator and room to grow and our landfill doesn't really need as much space. So we'll place our incinerator and I want to really be thoughtful about this. One of the other reasons I want to place this right here as opposed to over here is we have a high voltage connection. And as you can tell, the rear of the asset has that high voltage line and the front has what appears to be a high voltage line, but it's actually a low voltage connection. So I'm going to give this a bit of space on the side and kind of centrally locate this right about here. And then we'll use some alleyways to make connections to this. And we'll look at the asset to figure out what we need to do. Now, I would love to just have a connection right here. That's what makes the most sense. And then one right here as well, because you can see that this kind of loops around and there is a road that goes all the way around, but that is not something that is possible here. So we're going to try to make this seem a little bit more plausible. And what we'll do is make a connection right there and right here so you can access either side and then we'll add parking, even though it's not super necessary. And this will at least give the appearance that this all exists for a reason. <laughs> and then over here, I think even though we don't need an outside connection over here, it's not actually going to be functional. I'm going to add one anyway, and I think it'll look good. And then on this end, we need some sort of power connection. So we'll add our electrical cable over here and I'll go underground with these and I'll do that with both of the connections. So I placed this in the center for a very specific reason. I think that there are a couple of extension buildings. We've got the storage extension, so this will allow us to store more trash. And you can see that that actually does extend on the side. And then we have the garbage truck depot that occurs within the footprint of the building. And we also have the extra incinerator furnace again within the footprint of the building. So we just really need to leave some space on the side here just in case we want to expand and now i want to make a connection from this incinerator plant to our power transmission lines but i've got a problem if i just try to connect this it's going to connect into the back of our power plant and look fairly unnatural so what i'm thinking is we're going to call a bit of a mulligan on this transmission line and maybe we're going to pause it for just a moment maybe we get rid of all of these connections right here and then i'm going to connect up right here and then from there we'll run over and up so we're prioritizing these connections first and then we'll connect into the rest of our system. Much, much, much cleaner in my estimation. And it might not matter because we have a fire back here anyway and everything's gonna burn down, which is a good reminder. It's been noted in many comments that this whole facility should probably have fire coverage. And if we take a look, none right now. So I am gonna add a firehouse back here while I'm thinking about it. I'm sure this will be a great relief to many people. So we'll add that right back here. And that should help put that fire out. And there we go. We've already got all four of our fire trucks dispatched, all heading over to that fire. Thank goodness. <laughs> Switching gears back to our waste treatment facility. Now I want to build our recycling center. And what we're going to do is just extend this road right here. And we'll just go all the way along there. 
and we'll be thoughtful and respect what we've done before. So I've added the terraces and the trees back. And I love that you can see the differences in ages. We've got older trees on Middle Street, slightly younger on Cargo. And then on the new end of Middle Street, little baby trees. And right here, we are going to place a recycling center. I do think I want to set this a little ways back. And I don't necessarily want to have roads going into this. And I want to use alleys. I just want to scoot this far enough back that we can have our pavement extend. Look at that. That is absolutely wonderful. And I just want to take a look at this and see what we can do to upgrade this. We have a garbage truck depot that occurs within the footprint, adds more garbage trucks, a hazardous waste collection point, which will process 50 tons of garbage per month. And that is significant because our landfill does 100. So if we were to add two of these, that is as much capacity as our landfill. They also look really cool. So I know that's the most vain reason of looking at this asset, but I really like it. And then we have a storage extension, 100 capacity here. So we do need to leave a bit of space around this facility if we want to expand in the future. And truthfully, we don't even need to consider that right now because we are just fine. Now we are going to go ahead and decommission our old landfill. And the funny thing is I could start emptying this, but I don't really have to if I don't want to, but I have a, I have a, I have a thing I want to test. So if we look at our ground pollution right now, it's really, really bad right here. So I am going to actually empty this and see if that helps us. So basically if I were to delete this right now, the ground pollution would be, remain red. We are going to empty this. I'm going to let this run for a couple of minutes and we'll see if the ground pollution here improves at all. Now that was very interesting. There's a couple of things that I noticed. The first is that the processing speed slowed as we emptied out our facility. I can't really tell that there's an appreciable difference in the ground pollution. So that doesn't seem to be helpful. If you want to empty this, it's just because you want to do the right thing. And we also still have the same vehicles in use. And I don't know what they're doing because this place isn't doing anything. So we are going to remove this thing now and we could have done this before, just deleted it, and it would have had the exact same impact. Everyone's happy over here, but our uses in this area are definitely limited for a very long time. And now that our landfill is gone, let's move on to our industrial redevelopment. So I can only imagine that the residents in this area would be thrilled to find out that the city has office planned for this area. Now, in reality, when a city says uh, in our comprehensive plan, we want this to be offices, that doesn't mean that all these existing uses get evicted. It means that you wouldn't be able to develop more industrial uses in this area or expand these uses without a variance or something of that nature. Let's kick things off by dezoning this, and then I will get rid of all of these uses. That is the height of realism. <laughs> so in reality, we'd probably see a mix of uses through here, but I just want to accelerate things a bit. And what I'm thinking is we're going to go with some fairly stereotypical office type sites, and I want to go with the largest users that I can. And I want to go five by five because I want to share some parking with uh, a couple of uses side by side. So we're going to have an office and then we'll have a medium parking lot. And this is a five unit deep lot. And then we'll do the exact same thing again. And then our final facility will be a bit smaller as we have to give it its own parking lot. That looks very, very good. And I think for this one, we might go a little bit bigger. I was hoping that we'd have a building that would go all the way back, but we don't. So we'll deal with just a little bit of imperfection and I'll go with a two unit deep building. I wonder, maybe we can get six. Yes, we can go six. So very strange, we just don't have all of the different options. So because of that, I am gonna bump this back because I just want it to feel even and like this is part of the same facility. And the office uses, this is the primary reason why I wanted the parking. You can see that there is no parking associated with this building at all. So if we didn't add a parking lot, we would have a lot of street parking through here, which is fine, but kind of odd. I am going to remove all the parking on the street to get people parking in these lots and we'll add terraces to this as well. So this really makes it feel like a different place than it was before. And I really like that. And then I want to extend this a little ways back and you can see that there's a little bit further that we could go into this little donut. Maybe donut's the wrong word, more of a basin. I need to purchase another tile though. 
which we've been doing with little disregard. Oh my goodness. The entire industrial park is on fire. Oh my goodness. Oh dear. This, <laughs> this is not what I thought was going to happen. It burned down. Wow. Well, our industrial demand is high, so that will allow these places to, to fill back in. But geez, not at all what I expected. Yeah, look at that. We lost everything. Did we lose? We didn't lose our taxi depot. Chuckle shuttles is just fine. Well, that's very unfortunate. We're going to need to come back over here and just make sure that we don't have to rebuild some of our city service buildings. But boy, oh boy, what a fire. What a crazy fire. And this is what I'm talking about. We have a transformer here that we just need to click that rebuild button and it just kind of automatically rebuilds. So for any uses like that, we're just going to need to make sure that we come back through here and yeah, rebuild all of these. And it's pretty clear to me that we're going to need to come back here. We have to have our disaster response units serve each of these facilities before we're able to rebuild them. Right here, for instance, a fire engine is dispatched to come over here to make sure that any survivors are recovered. And until that happens, we cannot recover the building. So hopefully this ends at some point. But I do think we're going to need to have some larger uh, fire facility in the future. That little one that we just added apparently didn't do the trick. <laughs> we're still burning down literally everywhere going back to our industrial our former industrial site uh we wanted to buy that tile so we could go a bit further back and now that we have that we can at least completely build this area out and we're going to repeat the exact same pattern that we have been but i want to control our zoning a little bit and i'm just basically ensuring that most of our buildings are going to be spawning along this road and not on adjacent streets Part of the reason for all of this spacing is so that we could add pedestrian facilities back here so that we can have crossings and things of that nature and make this feel a bit more like a, a more cohesive campus. And there we go. I've cleaned things up just a little bit around here, added a roundabout down here, back the parking lot up, added some pads back here that employees could use on their lunch break. And truthfully, I think we could probably use just a bit of commercial as well. So I might call a bit of a mulligan over here. Clean that up first and foremost. And then we will add a little bit of commercial right here next to the parking lots and a bit more back here as well. I'm going to leave this completely empty and maybe we'll detail something nice through here. And I'm going to be completely upfront with you and say I started doing things right here with the roundabout. And by the time I got done with it, I didn't even remember why I was doing it. That is always something that is a bit of a risk. You get a little bit of tunnel vision and ultimately you end up doing a whole bunch of stuff and not even realizing why you're doing it anymore. That happens to me all the time anyway. All right. So I'm going to do the exact same thing back here with the paths. And there we go. I've added a number of paths through here. We've got paths connecting in between these buildings, one running along the entire back, some back here as well, and then connections in between the two different segments of this little office park. And then I had to do a little bit of adjustment to this road. We had some tearing and some strange things going on, and it's not perfect, but I'm perfectly okay with it. And then we've got our couple little commercial spaces. So you could go and I guess grab some electronics on your lunch break along with some furniture and some pharmaceuticals. Not exactly what I would have chosen for this location, but hey, maybe you need to get your prescription filled. And I think we've got one more spot right here. Where we could add just a bit more commercial and you better believe I'm going to do it. And we get some sort of interior design place. So it's fine. Restaurants are apparently not needed over here. <laughs> And now that we've redone this, let's go back over to our industrial park and repair the rest of these buildings. And boy, oh boy, our firehouse burned down. <laughs> our brand new one. I'm gonna let this go for a minute so we can get our firehouse rebuilt. And then I'm gonna go ham. We're gonna upgrade this. We'll have even more fire engines. We don't really have a lot of money, but you know what? It's fine. We've gotta put the fire out because the fire is just destroying everything in our community. This is just brutal, just brutal. And you know, there is one thing that this is making me recognize. There is one drawback to street trees. 
they light on fire. And that is what we are seeing repeatedly. We're seeing our street trees on our industrial streets lighting up on fire like candles. And that is just, it's really not good. It's really, really not good. And we do need to stop the bleeding because we've been spending so much money. So we will once again adjust our taxes and we're going to do it to our offices. We still have strong demand for office and industrial. So we'll boost that up a little bit commercial as well. Now that move did get us back into the green, but I don't necessarily love how we got there. We are going to develop a bit more industrial, which will hopefully allow us to drop taxes on everybody. So let's move on to redeveloping our rail yard. Folks, just look at those fires off in the distance, just taunting me. <laughs> it's gonna be a common thing this whole episode. So we are going to be redeveloping this area right here. And our rail yard was right here, though I think that we want to really consider redeveloping both sides of the railroad track because I think that there's actually a bit more space on this side of the railroad track. So it would make sense for this to be one cohesive development. All that said, right now, there's not a whole lot of connectivity outside of going above the foggy highway and then hopping on this dirt road. So what I'm thinking is we are going to get rid of this bend here and send a collector directly across the railroad track. And what we'll end up having is Railroad Street Street, a terrible name that we will fix, being a collector, this road right here being a collector, and then a new collector heading up this way, potentially even lining up with this dirt road going up to our little... Uh, mining site over here and then we'll have a number of local roads coming off from there so that we have proper roadway hierarchy so let's begin by severing this connection right here and one right here as well and then we're going to upgrade this dirt road right up to about right here and i'm going to stop there for one very specific reason i don't want to demolish any buildings probably not the best reason but it's the reason that we'll go with and then to formalize this as a collector i think that we will pave this area right there so now you can see that there's at least some sort of circulation pattern and maybe maybe a way to fix this i will try to center these so i'm going to grab these and use the replace tool to just pull those so that we are basically in the center that looks a lot better you can see that you wouldn't have to shift lanes we're just losing sidewalks perfectly fine by me now we are going to use the complex curve tool and link up this road with this one so to begin this, we'll select our midpoint. We'll say that's right about here where we want to go. And then we'll actually connect up. There we go. That is so beautiful. What a great tool. What a great tool. We'll have a slight derailment and uh, do a little bit of dancing. Everything is just fine. Now for this dirt road right here, this will be upgraded. I want to take this back a little ways though, because you can see that we're heading up a hill arbitrarily. We should probably come in right about here. And then we'll just upgrade this all the way over to our highway. Now, the nice thing about this is what we just did is connect up utilities basically everywhere. So we shouldn't have to worry about that at all. And then I've added this one last segment and added trees. And I just love that you get one little tiny baby tree right here. It shows that things have changed over time. Now for the rest of this, we'll go with some of our alleys, just like we did over here. And we are gonna just draw these in. Now, I want to parallel the railroad track. I don't want to cross it at all. And I'll be honest with you, it feels like the game is messing with me. I added these roads and all of the trees here shrunk down to be little baby trees. Like this road had to be reconstructed to, to make this happen. Whatever, we're going to go with it. But you can kind of see what I was thinking here. And I might even back this off a little bit further because we could add some railroad tracks through here, not necessarily functional tracks, but tracks that appear to, uh, to, to provide access to individual factories and things of that nature. And at this point, you might be asking yourself, Wow, that's a lot of infrastructure. Is this at all necessary? And the answer is no. <laughs> but I wanted to have a little bit of fun and do something a little bit different. And I really like the way that it's turned out. Now, one thing I do want to think about in this area is the direction that we have zoning occurring in. And I want to try to keep all of the zoning off Madison Street and Crescent Street. So we are going to add in some paths. 
and then we'll add in some of our factories and our offices. And actually, before we do that, I'm gonna add a bit of parking. And now that we have all of our parking, we can add in some of our factories and our offices. And I'm gonna do the exact same thing I did last time. We'll have little office or little uh, industrial spaces with office spaces right next to them. And a little bit more freestyling over here, I decided to add in a bit of commercial so that if you needed to fuel up or grab a bite to eat, you could do that. And I've also added a little extension to this road right here so we could have one more industrial site and one more parking lot. Now over here, it's much the same. So let's just get this done really quickly. Now I'm gonna be upfront with you and say that I have been seeing whatever this is. I've just been too nervous to look at it. So let's... <laughs> <laughs> of course, yes, you are coming to wipe out my entire little district that I'm working on right now. Do your worst. I don't care. <laughs> I think it's going to be fine. It seems like it's straddling our highway, which isn't ideal, but, you know, at least it's not coming right at us. And hopefully it just disappears soon. <laughs> These tornadoes, it's interesting. It seems like they don't do all that much damage, but they happen all the time and they happen right where you're working, which makes them really, really interesting. <laughs> and just like that, it's gone. And it looks like the result of our tornado is that uh, we've got one traffic accident. It's real sad. Sorry, Shasha. Hopefully uh, you will have everything resolved soon. I'm sure soon enough she'll get right back on the highway and drive away. No harm, no foul. So we're not going to worry about it all that much now i am struggling a little bit with zoning through here it's the same zoning stuff that we normally see in city skylines too where unfortunately buildings are just reacting to paths now one of the things that i've found makes this a little bit more successful for, and look at that sasha's driving away <laughs> everything's just fine uh one of the things that's worked for me is i just let the building come in before i delete the path and then most of the time things are fine so I'm going to let some of these buildings spawn in before deleting these. And now we'll go for it. We'll just get rid of these paths and everything is just fine. A-OK. -okay. You've just got to be patient. Oh, or not. Look at that. I tell I told you a lie. <laughs> I guess for this one, it just wants to shift the building over, which kind of stinks, but it's fine. And then to make this feel a little bit more realistic, I have this weird track right here. We are going to use the back of this building here because that's really what I'm trying to mirror or mimic is that this is actually a part of this building. So we are going to snap to the sides of this zone building and then I'll try to turn this in and I have basically all of my snap twos off and it hates what I'm doing. So we'll just call one more slight mulligan and things are looking good. Now, speaking of mulligans, there is one thing I want to do over here. So we added a fire department when I was freaking out about the all the fires, but we never added a police department. And I have a sneaking suspicion that we are struggling with that over here as well. And yeah, we have pretty poor coverage. So while we're in this area, I do want to think about that. It's a little bit off script, a little bit out of the <laughs> what we were doing but i want to get this in here because it's something that is going to be important for this area in the future so i'll just move this over here to the other side of what will be our local road and then we're going to add our police station over here now the benefit of this is that we will have patrol cars operating in this district and i'm likely going to expand this district over this entire area <laughs> Now, do you like how I said likely, like it could potentially happen or maybe not happen? And right away, I could proceed to do it. <laughs> Sorry about that, everybody. All right, now we're going to assign this to this district right here. So that is our police department. And we're going to do the exact same thing with our fire department. And that'll keep our circulation occurring within here, allowing us to take care of criminals in this area, as well as protect this place with fires. So I like that a ton. And then the very last thing I want to do over here is add just a couple of paths. This is always super dangerous, but I basically want to link the back end of this up to the main road and allow people to have easier walks if they were walking through this little district. 
and that was admittedly very disappointing. I tried to add a couple of pads through here and I had all my snap twos off thinking that that would allow me to get away with one. And unfortunately it did not. <laughs> so sometimes you have that where you, you add a path and if you get the crosswalk, that'll be what breaks your zoning. Sometimes though, you just end up in a rough spot where your zoning breaks and there wasn't much that you could do about it. And now that things have finally filled in, there's one last thing we have to do over here. We've got to rename this road, and I think that we'll just name this something like Crossing Street. This will be Railroad Street, and this will be Industrial Bend. I like that a ton more. This area is looking really good. I think that we should move on to a bit of rural development. For our rural development today, we're going to spend some time in the area that we built all the roads in in the previous episode. And there's a few things that I want to do here. The big thing is I want to have a county park right about here. So we will take a few different park assets and blend them together to create a lovely county park. And then for the rest of the area, we're going to have mostly low density residential, fairly spread out. We'll have a number of dirt roads coming off from these arterials and collectors. And then I want to add a little bit of commercial as well. So think a gas station and maybe even a supper club or something of that nature, something that's a real gem in the entire county that people will come to for miles away just to check it out. So I think we're gonna begin with our county park and the place we have to begin is a campfire site. So we've got our contours on so we can see that this is a relatively flat area. And I think we're gonna add maybe two or three of these to this area. And then we'll also add in some small playgrounds and all the roadway connections. We're not gonna worry about that. It's just gonna be a loop. We'll add that down the line. And then I also want to add a small park and a large city park. And that might seem weird adding a city park, but I think that it could really be the capstone of a county park as well. So I'm going to add one of these over here and a large city park over here as well. Now, the nice thing about adding all of this is it's going to attract people to this area. So if we have a supper club, there will be potential customers driving by. Now, the interesting thing is we've got all these baby trees. As these fill in, it should blend a bit more. I'm very curious, though, to know what trees we have back here so I can blend them a little bit better. And even though this isn't the landscaping section, I think it's really important that I nail this. So I am going to check it out. And it, truthfully, I wonder if that's it. That looks like it's an, no, it's an apple tree. That's not right. That's a hickory. So we have hickories throughout this entire area. So I'm going to spray these through here. I need to stop saying that. <laughs> but we are going to have a number of hickory trees through here so that we have a bit of blending. And then interestingly, ooh, look at that. So it looks like the trees at the campfire sites can vary. And this one right here appears to be a pine tree. So we will have both hickories and pines. I'm going to find another word. <laughs> we are going to plant a number of them through this area and make it look a bit more natural. And I especially want to make sure that this is very dense along the roads so that when you're inside the park, it feels like a secluded destination. And there we go. I think this is pretty good. We could add a bunch of pads or things of that nature, but there's just not really a point because folks will walk along the sides of the road and our paths are paved. If we do add paths, I think that we are going to do it to add some sort of an overlook. And in fact, I think we will add one of those over here. And maybe we make our restaurant right near this so that folks would be able to check this out if they were either at the park or at the restaurant. And there we go. Nothing all that elaborate, but you can imagine coming down here and taking a look and seeing this tree that's in the way. Goodbye tree. <laughs> you get a great view of the city. You get a great view of the water. You get a great view of this. <laughs> so lots of great things to see there. Now we are going to add in our one major commercial destination. And I think, like I mentioned, we'll add that right here. And I'm going to go as large as we can and see what we get. Oh, and this looks exactly like what I was hoping for. I was hoping to get something that looks similar to this so that we can have parking next to it and make it seem like a really busy place. It's a food place. I think that means it's a restaurant, so or it's a grocery store. One of the two, whatever. It's going to benefit this area, and it's the building footprint that I was hoping for, so I'm going to take that as a win. 
I'm gonna detach this and we're gonna add a huge parking lot next to this. And this really, to me, makes it feel like a Wisconsin style supper club, which is the vibe that I'm going for, except that it's backwards. So you could only enter it from the forest. Either way, we probably should have leveled this out anyway. So maybe it's for the best. And then before we move on and start adding all of our residential, I noticed that there's some weird jog in the road right here. So we're just going to bump this over. We'll just use our replace tool and nudge this over a little bit and if we have that at an, at an intersection it's definitely not great but better than where it was there we go that is pretty darn good so for all of our residential we're going to add in some gravel roads and i basically want to have just a couple of roads coming off we'll have a couple of homes on each of them and we'll load this area up And now that we have these here, let's just add a couple of homes along here. And the nice thing about these areas is we don't have to control the zoning all that much. The one thing I do want to check out, though, I just want to see if we have any homes unlocked. We do have this pop musician mansion, and I think we're going to add that to the top of the hill right here. Now, this will improve well-being within 500 meters, which is great because we're out in the middle of nowhere. So maybe <laughs> it'll benefit a broader swath of the community. But this feels like an excellent spot for this right at the top of this hill, nice and secluded, lots of privacy, and it even has that dirt road that we were talking about. Oh, and this is a bummer. You can see that I connected this right up, but it really wants the road to come to the side for some reason. What we can do to get around this is we'll use our continuous tool and I'll add a roundabout. And let's be honest, that's kind of silly that that's there, but at least, at least it looks a little bit better. And just to perfect this, I'm gonna move it around a little bit and hopefully make the driveway. Yeah, that looks a lot better. So I'm pleased with that. I think it's fascinating that we have high rent issues here. Who's living here? A retired person, two retired people who are both poor, living in the pop musician mansion. There's nothing I can do for you. I don't know what, why you decided to live there. I don't know. <laughs> for the rest of this, we're gonna load it up with some residential. And with this area filling in, there's one last place I wanna focus on, and it's actually right behind this farm. So there is a kind of a clearing right here, and I think that this will be ripe for development and they would likely wanna make a little bit of money here. So we are going to run the road along the back of the hillside here so that they have some forest buffering them from this development. And now we'll add in some more homes. And I've been using all of the European ones up here. I'm gonna switch and have some American ones down here. That likely means that we get trailers and things of that nature and I will live with it. And honestly, for this area, this is probably the right amount of development. There's just one more thing I wanna add and we are going to roll the dice once again and try to get a gas station. It's probably not gonna work, but you know what? It never hurts to try. So we're gonna add a road right here. And I went with a four by four, but again, I can't remember exactly what spawns gas stations. This one right here is actually a three by three. So maybe we'll try one of those over here as well. And I will need to connect utilities up so we can get take care of that right away as well. And let's see what we got here. We have furniture and beverages. <laughs> and in the spirit of mulligans, I've decided to completely rethink this little area and vary the zoning sizes. And I just want to see what we ended up with. We ended up with recreation, plastics, recreation, electronics, entertainment, and beverages so we are not getting a gas station and i know i could use the developer tools but i don't want to do that because i want this series to be as accessible for someone who wants to play vanilla as possible and sometimes you just don't get what you want and truthfully that's a lot more like reality anyway because you'd have a zoning code you'd have a variety of allowable uses and you wouldn't really be able to say i only want a gas station that's not the way it works unless the city tosses money at it and we're not going to do that we're not going to do that we have the ability we're not gonna do that. <laughs> so I think we're gonna be happy with what's zoned in here and move on to a bit of landscaping and detailing. 
And we'll kick things off over by our rail yard. And there's not a lot to do, but I see that we've got a car parking on the street. So we will remove some of our parking on our street here. And since we have the line tool, I'm going to add a little bit of vegetation around the parking lot as well. And then while we're over here, I noticed something that we need to fix. Underneath this power line, there's a whole bunch of really tall trees. So when I see stuff like this, I think it's always good just to take care of it. And underneath here, what I'll do is take the brush strength way, way down. And we are just going to plant a bunch of wild bushes and apple trees and things of that nature. And there we go. That should be good enough. And now the trees won't get so tall along here that they grow into the power lines, which I think you'd expect to see. Now, moving along, we'll come over here. And in this location, I think it's just adding a whole bunch of trees and once again, removing street parking along our collector. And then I'm going to go up and down the train track and just remove some of these trees because I don't want any trees sprouting up in between these tracks. And then I want to do a little bit of terraforming as well. I've been eyeballing this location right here. It looks pretty terrible. And we should honestly take a look at the last place that we were building in as well because we might have some more oddities like this one. Oh, and I'm super happy that we came back over here because you can see just how messy some of this is. So we'll just clean this up, do a little bit of terraforming and try to make this look a bit more natural. Obviously, there'd have to be a little bit of carving into the hillside to make this work. And for a facility of this size, you never know, it might just happen. And oh my goodness, that looks so much better. And uh, this has always been this way. If you won't tell anyone, I won't tell anyone. <laughs> now over in our office park, we're going to add a ton of landscaping through here. We've got all these paths that we can decorate along the side of and maybe even make things like this feel like a unique amenity in this area. And now that I've landscaped all the way through this little office park, we are going to add a whole bunch of dense landscaping through this entire area. Now, I'm going to be really upfront with you all and, and explain why I'm adding so much landscaping here. This entire area is super polluted and it's a little bit of a test for me. I want to see if we can actually alleviate some of the pollution here, because if we take a look at our ground pollution, it's real bad. And I've noticed that ground pollution doesn't seem to disappear, which may be a known issue, might not be, not 100% sure, but we're going to test it out. So remind me in coming episodes, if I don't show you this, to do so. So drop that in the comments below. Well, not in this one, on a future one. <laughs> and there's not a ton to do over here, but there is one thing that I want to do. I just want to add one solitary oak tree right there and maybe even some flowers around here. And then I just want to check out all of our terrain heights here because I imagine that they would want to have good views. And I just planted some trees along the side here that would actually block those views. So it's always good to come back through and check your work because obviously <laughs> this isn't it. <laughs> uh, also, we got to level off a couple of things to make this feel like an actual building site. So let's take a look at the views here. Yeah, they would definitely want to open this up. And now when we come and look through this house, well, we see the house, but we can get some views of the city. And in fact, you know what? We're going to go even harder. And look at that. Now that we've removed those trees, you get a fantastic skyline view. And I think that that would be incredibly valuable for someone living right here. Next, I want to move over to our, uh, well, we, we tried to get a gas station, but we didn't get it. One thing I noticed is that we've got this real estate office right here that has no parking and then we have a plastics place. So what we're going to do is add a parking that could be a parking lot that could be shared for this entire development. Just a small one. And we'll add that right in the center. The only thing I don't like is that the small parking lot has all of this fencing around it and gates. It's very urban feeling. Let's see if we have a better one. Grossly overbuilt, but a ton more appropriate. So we will go with it, except for the lights. There's always something. There's always something. 
And then I've got one last wild card that we need to throw out. A number of you pointed out two videos ago that this is not complete. The quad is missing a tree right here. So we've got to add that in. It's an oak tree and we're going to use our line tool so it becomes an adult oak. I'm guessing many of you are feeling as good as I am right now. So much better. And now with all of that landscaping complete, there's only one more thing left to do. Take inventory of what we've done with a brief city tour. And you know, I really hope that this episode demonstrates why you can't be afraid to take a mulligan from time to time. Whether you are fixing things based upon knowledge that you've gained while playing or redeveloping things that just no longer are compatible with the surrounding uses. And in cities generally, there is a constant evolution, a constant change, and you can't be afraid to do that in your cities. It's one thing I really appreciate about City Skylines too, is that you're constantly encouraged to redevelop and rethink your cities. In fact, we're seeing that right now. We have all of these high rent signs popping up after we've gained about a thousand population in the community. The thing is, this time around, I think it's because we actually have a high unemployment rate. Yeah, we're at 8.4% unemployment. So what we would need to do is probably add some low rent housing plus add a bunch of employment, even though we've already added a lot in this episode. I look at that as the game encouraging you to continue tinkering with your city. And I really, really love that. And I've really, really enjoyed bringing you this episode today. And even though we've got all these icons all the way across the land, as far as you can see, I think that we're moving in the right direction. And I hope that you feel that way as well. And I really hope that you've enjoyed this one. If you did, please consider hitting the like button. If you're not subscribed to the channel, please consider doing so. And I really want to thank you for your time today. There's a million things that you could have been doing. You decided to take a little bit of time out of your day to hang out with me and play some City Skylines too. And I appreciate you for that. Thank you so much, and I will see you in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.